I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. So before we get into the video, uh, only 1.8% of you guys are actually subscribed to my channel. I wonder if we can get that number up to 2% by next month. Can we do it, guys? Make sure to hit the subscribe button. It costs nothing, and uh, it makes me super happy. Hello, guys, and welcome today to a shader review. Now, this is my first shader review, actually, out of all of them. And today, we are going to be reviewing uh, Silder's Vibrant Shaders uh, Light. Now, this is actually the worst version of Silder's Vibrant Shaders that you can get. And look at how great it looks. Now, here's the specs for my computer. Um, so if you have those same specs or better, then you can run this shader. Uh, just the exact same as I'm doing, even better than I'm doing actually because I'm recording it. Um, so basically you will find that um, if you do a little fiddling around with the settings, you can have such things as colored shadows. So I have blue shadow here, or more blue, it's obviously on a green background, but you can see that it's more blue. And then a kind of purple grayish color here. I'm not even quite sure what to call it, it's kind of more like a brown here from the purple, because purple plus green brown. And then you have red over here, this is obviously a more bright brown, but if I put it on, let's say, a... Uh, white background, then you should see that all of this is uh, all of the different colors. Now, they're not very, very prominent, but I doubt that actual colored shadows would be. And you can even see over here, I have it, so there's even a layer of green glass above it, which makes this even more green. Uh, but you can clearly see the colors now. We've got blue shadows, We've got purple shadows, and we've got orange, or red shadows, rather. And, uh, you can see them over here as well. You can see everything has a nice little shadow to it, and I've actually lowered the shadow resolution to make it perform better. But if you have, uh, better specs than me, then, then you can obviously keep it. Um, the only problem is that glowstone, uh, doesn't actually, um... Like, if you put a light source other than the sun or the moon... Uh, with the light, it obviously doesn't work here, so we have glowstone shining through this green, but it doesn't show as green. Another thing you can turn on is reflections. Now, I have reflections on for everything you can have reflections on. So on metallic blocks, like iron, or let's say if I got a gold block here, and I started placing some, you can see there is, um, there is reflections on that. Uh, in the gold blocks. You can also see that I have it on for polished, so, so let's say polished uh, diorite or andesite. Uh, let's just grab some polished andesite and let's show you. Uh, it works for all these polished blocks, so you can change all of this in the shader settings. Uh, I also have reflections on for the water and I also have Another thing, I forget what it's called, but it makes it so that down below here you can actually see, um, because of the diffraction of the light, there's these, uh, there's these, uh, little bits of light, and it really adds a whole another level of life to your world. Another thing you can get is volumetric clouds, so you can have clouds that look like this, instead of just the normal boring 2D clouds. And you can also have motion blur, so I have a very slight motion blur on. But if you see, I'll go into my video settings, shaders, and shader options. I can actually turn the motion blur strength to high, and I'll show you guys what that does here. Now, it will lag for a little bit just because it's got to change all of that. Uh, but you can see now that there's a lot of motion blur, so if you look up at those stars there, they blur around as you look around. But obviously, I don't want the motion blur to be this much, because that's just kind of, like, intense. So I'm going to set that back down. So once again, go into Video Settings, Shaders, and here you can actually put on shaders. So the exact same as you would put on a texture pack, you just click on the Shaders folder, 
and then drag the zip file from your downloads to the shaders pack and then it's all ready to go and you click shader options and then select whatever you want uh, I like to keep motion blur strength on low I haven't put on bloom because bloom actually does take a like a big hit to your performance so now you can see that I have motion blur low so before when these were like straight up lines now if you shake them they're more like dots with streaks so a little bit less motion blur um, also a thing that you can have on with Optifine, which you need to put this on, is, let's say you have your netherite sword in one hand, and your torch in the other. Now, you might be saying, well yeah, we know, we know about the dynamic lighting, we know all that. But with shaders, you can put the torch in your off hand, and have the netherite sword in your real hand, and you can actually see the light from the torch going on to your sword. So here it is normally, and then if you put the torch on, you can actually see that light put on your sword, and you can actually also see the motion blur. So uh, another demonstration of this light is if we go in here and take away the light, we see pitch black all around us. It's kind of hard to differentiate where we're going. You can also see the motion blur on our arm there. But then if we take this light on, now we can see, oh hey, well there's a texture here, there's a texture here, but there's no texture here, so we must go that way. We can get out. So, all in all, I think this is a pretty good shader, and it can actually make for some pretty, pretty, pretty good shots. Uh, just like these. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, I really hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more shader reviews exactly like this one, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video too. Comment down below which shader you would like to see next, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!